and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about McMaster Health Side. We're going to be going over some stereotypes, some tips for supplementary application. We're just going to be discussing the program in general. So what I did was I sent out a survey to some current and former McMaster Health Side students. I had over 20 responses. So if you're watching this, thank you very much. Everyone's Instagram handle that wanted to be identified in this video as a respondent will be posted below. So if you have questions about Health Side, you can reach out directly to them. Next week, I will be doing a program breakdown like I did for my program, iSight McMaster. And then the week after that, I'll be going into Queen's Health Side. So over the next few months, along with my regular content about university, I will be doing program breakdowns, mostly science-based program breakdowns. So all of the McMaster programs, a few at Queen's, a few at U of T, a bit at Western, and a bunch of other schools. So without further ado, let's get into it. Like I said, all of these respondents are either former or present Health Side students. So this is coming straight from them. These aren't my opinions. Okay, so let's get started. What are your favorite things about Health Side? A lot of answers were the community. Very close-knit and everyone supports each other. The facilitators are very kind and understanding. They're willing and able to help. Some of the profs, Stacey Ritz and Jennifer Nash, they are so accommodating. The method of teaching is interactive. Small classes and assessments that really force you to internalize the concepts you learn rather than just memorize. That's a big one because a lot of the time in university, you're forced to memorize and regurgitate and you don't really understand complex ideas. There's a lot of group work and collaboration, a lot of self-directed inquiry-based learning. So doing research and inquiring about things that you find interesting as opposed to having a prof lecture at you. That's really interesting as well. The inquiry-based programs at McMaster like iSci, HealthSci, and ArtSci do tend to teach this way. And personally, I found that it's very helpful as well. So that makes sense. Someone said, it's easy. I like the fact that you have the room to choose courses you're truly interested in. Someone else commented how easy it is. Lots of personal skill development and emphasis on how to learn rather than contextual learning. For example, developing skills to research databases and use those to learn about biochem rather than a traditional textbook way. That's a very applicable and usable skill in the real world. Teachers are so supportive and make sure that nobody gets left in the dust. Another one about the community, two more about the community, work in non-traditional testing methods and community. As a smaller program, there's a great sense of community. Most profs want us to succeed and other students will help each other out with studying in content instead of gatekeeping. So it's funny that people say this because I've read these already and further down there are people with completely opposing ideas on the program. So this person said there's no gatekeeping. I know further down there's someone who talked a lot about how there's a ton of gatekeeping which is interesting to see. Least favorite things if any. Some courses are very not traditional. Not necessarily a bad thing. In fact I find this approach really interesting sometimes. However there are some cases when the non-traditional nature of it made the course confusing and not necessarily helpful to my learning. And there were a couple of responses like that. There's a certain pressure when you get into the program and you unanimous expectation for you to go down that path, that path being to be a doctor, even if you want to explore other careers. That's interesting. Least favorite, sorry, but the people. People always say how health side people are such keeners and it is very much true. I looked up the word keener. It's essentially a person like if the teacher's wrapping up, everyone's leaving for the day would go, hey, teacher, teacher, you haven't assigned homework yet. Everybody in health side are such keeners and it's very much true. Don't get me wrong. I try very hard in school, but there's a certain line I don't cross because at that point I'm putting my mental health at risk fair. I don't involve myself in group chats because people are always talking about what they've done and it's so nerve wracking to see people talking about something that you're so behind in. Also, people love to talk about all their extracurriculars they do, which is so discouraging and intimidating. Um, Yeah, that is a pretty common thing, especially in pre-med. It's not necessarily always toxic, but there are a lot of people who tend to kind of flex their research and flex their volunteering and bring it up in conversations to make other people feel bad. So I'm not entirely surprised by that. I'm sure it's not everyone like this person said, but it does exist. And that exists in other programs too. I've seen it happen myself. And another person said the same thing. Everyone constantly talking about the research and extracurriculars are taking part in for med applications. It is very competitive. As the program is filled with students who are very high achievers in high school, a lot of these students want to enter into medicine. So there's a very stressful aspect to the program as people are constantly talking about med school and their GPA. It can lead to a lot of imposter syndrome. So I'm sensing a theme here. It can get pretty competitive, especially since a lot of people want to pursue medical school. Oh, this one. This one's a good one. Many people are not here for the right reasons. I have heard upwards of five people openly admit to wanting to go into medicine only for the money. Some people in the program are very privileged and out of touch, which makes it difficult to find people to connect with. There are people in the program who are homophobic, racist, et cetera, and who have an almost guaranteed path to med school because of their connections. It's very frustrating to see the wrong kind of people become doctors. I've heard similar things. So 
take that with a grain of salt. There are always going to be bad apples in programs. It's unfortunate, but it's important that it's talked about because I feel like a lot of people don't talk about the side of pre-med. Really hard to make friends out of the program. People being crazy overachievers can be really stressful. Oh, there are some or many people in the program that think that they are better than everyone else. Some are cocky and arrogant. What do you think some stereotypes are about health side? Do you agree with them? Why or why not? A stereotype is that people in HealthSci are very cocky. And I gotta say, I low-key agree. Like some people have an attitude where they look down at other people because they're in HealthSci. That it's super competitive and cutthroat. It is certainly competitive, but I've never felt that people are out to get each other. However, there are certainly some people who will do their best to subtly put you down. Do not listen to them. It is your journey and your marks matter, but should never matter more than your mental health. Preach. One stereotype is that everyone wants to go to medical school. In my experience, this tends to be true, but I found it to be a supportive environment which peers help each other for the common goal. We are all keeners. It's very true. So this person is using keeners in every single one of their responses. I love it. Also, so many people gatekeep their work. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. I know most people want to be doctors, which is another stereotype that health side people love to say it isn't true, but it is, but it doesn't hurt to help others and share notes. I'm always afraid to reach out because I don't know how people will react. I honestly feel that sometimes I'm afraid to reach out in my program just because, I don't know, I feel like people will be judgmental. I've never had that happen to me. That's my own personal block. Like I need to get over that, but I get where this person is coming from. Health side is easy. I very much disagree. Like with any other program degree, there are courses that are easier than others. However, we still have to work hard for high grades. The most common misconception is that everyone in HealthSci gets into med school. People seem to think that getting into HealthSci gives you a magic ticket to med school when in reality, the program is filled with tons of hardworking and bright minds that work hard to achieve their goals. Getting into HealthSci doesn't mean you will get into med school and not being HealthSci definitely doesn't mean you won't go to med school. So if the only reason you want to get into HealthSci is because you think it will be an easy way to med school, then maybe this isn't the program for you. One major one that I think is that it's an easy program. I personally highly disagree. I think the program is highly challenging in many ways. Also, some of the most difficult courses I have taken have been health side courses such as cell bio and anatomy. That is totally fair, but just so people watching know, you can also take cell bio and anatomy outside of health side, so it's not necessarily just a health side course. Like you can take it if you go into life side. In fact, most of my friends are. When I got into health side, I found that my schedule was considerably emptier than my other friends who were in programs like I sci, life sci, and eng. Health side often gets the reputation that it is a joke because of this, and that the program is specifically designed to give you the best chance at a 4.0 GPA. I can't speak on that part, but I did feel that the stereotype was a negative one, definitely. For example, I never felt that I could talk to my non health side friends about my stresses because everyone has the idea in their mind that health side is supposed to be a breeze and that in a way we don't deserve to complain about our schoolwork. That's true, honestly. I've seen that happen. So health side is not an easy program, but it definitely sucks that people feel like they can't talk about it, especially when it's something like schoolwork, which can cause a lot of stress and mental health issues. So be nice to your health side friends. They're definitely going through it as well. Easy 4.0. Although this program is relatively less intense than the other science programs, I would say you do have to put an effort and be engaged with your learning to do well. It's not as easy as everyone makes it to be and only those who experience the program will understand this. I think a common theme for this section, so for stereotypes, is that the health side program is easy. And I feel like people who aren't in university already have this assumption that because health side is so difficult to get into, it's ridiculously difficult once you're in the program. And I think that's what contributes to people in university once they figure out what courses and what the schedule of a health side student looks like. They go, oh wow, this is ridiculously easy, but it's just because they had an overinflated expectation of how difficult it may be. So this is a McMaster program. In general, McMaster programs are not easy just because they have less class time or what you thought of health side wasn't actually how it is doesn't mean that it's not difficult and that it's so easy to get a 4.0. Just wanted to say that. What is the quirkiest thing about health sci in your opinion? Inquiry. It's a course where you just talk to your peers about inclusion and how to make decisions and you decide what you want to do in that course. To be completely honest, I don't know. I didn't participate in anything because I hate the BHSC social scene, but I suppose that the quirkiest thing within the program in general would be OCATs. These tests are wonderful because you can study as much as you want and still fail because you don't know enough about super random culture and history tidbits. So an OCAT, as explained to me by health side student is a only one correct answer test. There are lots of questions in the form of riddles and just weirdly structured questions that are like super random and about minutiae. And there's only one word that is the correct answer, hence the name OCATS. And then there are also things called no cats, which is a no correct answer test. We will delve deeper into that in next week's video on the program breakdown. Literally, why do we have a separate mascot thing like the wolf pack and bleeding blue? It's weird in my opinion, <laughs> fair enough. Definitely first year inquiry classes. If you know 
embryo, then you know that's all I can say. Very cryptic. The quirkiest thing would probably be the testing methods of first year cell biology. The tests were essentially riddles that you had to solve or literal made up mysteries that you had to solve using science. I mean, I find that interesting. I probably wouldn't want to do it myself, but I mean, that's that's an interesting evaluation. No cats. Quirkiest evaluation is definitely the no cats. Oh cats, no cats and inquiry. I'm just reading and they're all oh cats and no cats. What are a couple of things that make HealthSci unique? So kind of a similar question. The assessment styles are quirky and so are some of the profs. It is unique because it gives you lots of time to fill with things that really interest you. Inquiry-based learning, emphasis on group work, the inquiry approach, inquiry-based, inquiry-based learning, group work. So they do a lot of group work in this program. But to go a little bit more in depth, a course that emphasizes group work is interdisciplinary problem solving and health. The course focused on asking good questions rather than answering them. We looked at a broad concept of health, such as food and nutrition and vaccines through different pillars, social, environmental, public health, policy, biomedical to construct meaningful questions. There were three main assignments that were all to be completed as a group, which not only helped us all to develop collaboration skills, but became really enjoyable. My group became good friends by the end of the course. That's awesome. I find that type of course to be so interesting. Inquiry-based learning. Don't have to take a math and a science course. That is true. They don't have to take math in health science. So if you don't like math, you don't have to take it unless you want to take it as an elective. How are assessments different than a traditional program? Less formal tests, more assignments, reflections, presentations. Lots are reflection-based, reflections. So again, this is pretty unanimous. They're all talking about reflections. They're either weird and frustrating or pointless. Some courses make assessments deliberately soul crushing while others require you to reflect on reflection you did about reflecting. It is certainly a mixed bag. Reflect on reflection you did about reflecting. Say that five times really fast. Much more emphasis on subjective presentations and demonstration of learning rather than hard content itself. I'm pretty sure most health side courses don't have exams, but that's because we have large assignments. I think this depends on the course, but we do a lot of reflections as well as documenting our processes, especially for the inquiry style courses. They really care about the journey rather than the outcome and like to see progress rather than a right answer. Assessments are truly about demonstrating how you can apply what you have been taught to novel concepts and ideas. A lot of assessments don't have rubrics. This can be stressful at first, but honestly is a great method to just focus on learning instead of marks. A lot of health side courses, especially first year, don't have exams, lots of group assignments. While there are some classes with lectures, midterms, and finals, others take an approach that focuses more on projects, assignments, and reflections. So essentially what I'm getting from here is it's not the traditional, you go to your lecture and you take your exam at the end of the year and you have your midterms. There are different types of assessments. This is what most of the inquiry programs do. Advice for students applying to health side while writing their sub app. Don't give the answer you think they want you to give. Give your honest opinion and think outside of the box. Just be authentic to yourself. Literally, there's nothing more to it. Be yourself, such simple advice, but it's true. Do not plug your extracurriculars or awards or etc. Write with passion and show the admissions committee that you belong in healthcare. This is so true because they want to assess who you are as a person. So if you're just trying to cram all your extracurriculars in, all your leadership, all that stuff, they're not going to care. They're going to look at it and put it in another pile. If they wanted your resume, they would ask for it. Yeah, so I'm getting a lot of this. Do not talk about things that make you sound good. One of my props who reads the sub app literally told us how much he hates when people mention their volunteer your work or stuff like that because he's heard it all before. He knows the type of people who apply to this program, so make sure you write about yourself and who you are as a person, as in a human being and not a robot with good marks who just studied. They know that you're gonna be doing stuff. They know that if you're applying to this program, you're probably a very hardworking person who has done leadership, who has been in clubs and whatnot. They don't care about that. They wanna hear who you are. The key is to be yourself. You really want to have a unique answer. And the best way to do that is to show your personality and individuality through your writing. Be yourself, make sure to answer the question. Try and draw connections between your life experience and the questions that are being posed to you. You don't need to talk about extracurriculars unless they played a massively significant role in your life. My main piece of advice for writing the sub app, you don't need to write about health or medicine or the program. The readers just want to know who you really are, how you think, and if the program will be a good fit for you. Don't be afraid to pursue an idea you originally thought of and maybe found even ridiculous. Two, remember that the person reading your application is reading so many other ones, so Think about what is unique to you and how you can stand out. Three, don't be afraid to show your personality, your creativity, and your sense of humor. Four, delivery is really important. So if you're gonna talk about something basic, you have to make sure it is interesting. Five, answer the question. This one seems obvious, but so many people neglect it. Don't try to force your extracurriculars in your answer and show them off. Just simply answer the question. If something belongs there, include it. That was a very in-depth answer. Thank you to whoever wrote that. The biggest tip I could give is to respond to the questions as if you were talking to your parents or friends and not so much an admissions officer. I love that advice. Obviously you wanna keep them more formal language, but don't focus that much on flexing because everyone's gonna be doing that. And now we have what type of student should apply to HealthSide? Someone who is interested in health sciences and working in group settings, not someone who is just trying to rep a prestigious degree and be super competitive. Someone who wants to be there to learn. 
somebody who's empathetic, compassionate, and wants to change the way we treat people in healthcare, not somebody who wants to be in the profession for money or status or to fulfill some need for intellectual superiority. Could not have said that better myself. I think a really important one is that you have to like doing group work or at least tolerate it because you will have to do a lot of it. You also have to be open-minded and be able to adapt to different types of learning environments. You do not need to be a med gunner to apply to health sciences. It's a very, very broad term that encompasses so many fields of study and career options. Someone who is ready to reflect and be self-aware. Additionally, someone who is really interested in science and the scientific process such as reading and reviewing academic journals. All right, last question. How heavy is the course load compared to other science programs at McMaster, such as life science, ISI, engineering, etc.? Below average course load, very light, I think. 90% less, not heavy at all. My friends and other programs are always drowning in work and I just cannot relate. I think the course load may be lighter, but that's an opportunity for most of us to immerse ourselves in the community and other extracurriculars. Because most people who are applying to medical school, you do need a lot of extracurriculars. So it makes sense that you would have more time in your schedule to do those types of things. I'm going to be honest, it's heavy, but the course load for life sciences, engineering, etc., is far more challenging and time consuming, but that's not me saying a health site is an easy program. I'd say the course load would probably be less than that of life sci, I sci, and engineering, but you're still going to spend a similar amount of time to them in studying. Honestly, it's just very different. From someone who started in life sci at Queens, I would say health sci is less content heavy, but so challenging in other ways. The course load is definitely not light. However, it does vary between students depending on what electives they take. Students who take physics or math as an elective will end up having a similar schedule to life sci students. I took physics as an elective first semester and found that my life science roommate and I had very similar workloads. This is very, very true. Everyone in ISI said second year was one of the hardest years of integrated science and that, you know, I'd be struggling a lot. But because I took earth and environmental sciences and I wasn't taking super time intensive courses like Orgo, I have had the best time and have had so much time to look deeper into my courses. I never felt stressed to the point that I did in first year. So it really does depend on the electives you take. And if you're taking a lot of memory intensive, very difficult and complex courses, obviously your year is going to be a bit more different than someone who like myself was taking courses don't require as much of a time commitment. But like everyone else is saying on this thread, that doesn't mean that it's not difficult and or challenging. It's not too bad, but the thing is people stack their schedules with extracurriculars, which can make the workload seem bigger. It is probably lighter than most STEM programs because we have more electives, which gives you the ability to give yourself an easier slash harder schedule depending on your courses. My camera just died. Okay. Hello, we're back. It's not heavy at all in comparison to other programs. While my friends were studying for three to five final exams, I was studying for two. That being said, don't ever feel that your stresses aren't worth being talked about just because your course load is lighter than others. Very, very true. Reach out to people if you're stressed. Don't feel like your feelings aren't valid. Not that heavy, I would say. It's just different stuff we learn, which may seem hard, but easy to get the grasp of if you are engaged in your courses. So that would be the end of the video. Like I said, next week, I will be doing a program breakdown on health science at McMaster, much like how I did for iSci at McMaster. And then I will be moving on to other programs that are highly requested, such as Queens Health Sci, which is coming up in two weeks, McMaster Life Sci, McMaster Engineering, some other engineering, Western Health Sci, Western Med Sci. And if you have any other programs that you'd like me to go over or to speak to other students about, please leave them in the comments. I do check them. And if I have a week where I don't have a video plan, and I will reach out to people and work on those videos that you recommend to me. Thank you for watching. If this helped you out, please leave a like and subscribe and I will see you next time.